dropped from midair from beneath the wings of a B-52 mothership. The X-15A2 ignited its powerful rocket engine and streaked into the upper atmosphere. Previous burns only lasted 90 seconds, but on this flight, October 3, 1967, the aircraft was equipped with special tanks that would allow the rocket to stay lit for an additional 51 seconds. The additional burst of thrust sent the X-15A2 hurtling through the sky to reach a speed of Mach 6.7. As the engine burned out, alarms sounded and the plane was buffeted by shockwaves. Aerodynamic heat melted an attachment pylon and tore away a dummy scramjet that was being tested on the aircraft. It was the fastest speed at which a piloted flight had ever flown. And with the mission having come perilously close to disaster, the record has not been challenged to this day. The X-15 was a rocket-powered aircraft operated by the U.S. Air Force and NASA as part of the X-Plane series of experimental aircraft. Furthermore, it set altitude record in the 1960s, reaching the very edge of outer space. It returned with valuable data, later used in aircraft and spacecraft design. The size and weight of this plane alone are worth mentioning in detail. It was 50 feet 9 inches, or 15.5 meters in length, with a wingspan of 22 feet 4 inches, or 6.8 meters. It stood at 13 and a half feet, or 4.1 meters in height. Its empty weight was 14,600 pounds, or 6,622 kilograms, while its fully fueled weight was 34,000 pounds, or 15,422 kilograms. However, it was this plane's power plant that was its standout stat. It had a Thiokol XLR-99 liquid fuel rocket engine capable of developing 57,850 pounds, or 257.3 kilonewtons of thrust. For comparison, that's more than three times the thrust of a standard Boeing 737. A tremendous amount of power. The X-15 was designed with a rocket engine fueled by liquid oxygen and ammonia so that it could achieve hypersonic speed. The levels of thrust needed to attain such high speeds meant that the plane was anything but fuel efficient. Its engine could guzzle roughly 15,000 pounds or 6,800 kilograms of fuel in just 80 seconds. In 1967, the U.S. military was still financing the military-industrial complex that had dominated the U.S. economy since World War II. Even in the peaceful period that went on for 25 years, immediately after the end of the war, the U.S. was still spending roughly $328 billion per year on its military, adjusted for inflation. That's considerably less than the nearly $700 billion that the Pentagon got for its 2018 budget, but it was an astonishing 9% of the U.S. GDP in 1967. A wash in money, U.S. agencies like NASA and the Air Force were spending big money on funding experimental vehicles, arms, and technologies. The X-15 research airplane was one such project, and was one of over 30 so-called X-vehicles produced by the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and NASA between 1946 and 1971. One of the ongoing obsessions of military strategists and designers was to build machines capable of record altitudes and hypersonic speeds. Testing of these extreme machines was done in the remoteness of the Nevada desert, away from prying eyes, both local and foreign. Experiments were primarily aimed at how best to design spacecraft that could carry human pilots. It's no coincidence that the first man who would later walk on the moon in July 1969, Neil Armstrong, had trained for his Apollo 11 mission by flying the X-15. Dozens of tests were conducted at increasingly ambitious speeds, but the Air Force wanted to test the X-15 at its absolute speed limit. Twelve men flew the X-15 during these tests, and it was Major William Pete Knight who was the lucky man chosen for the record-breaking feat. Knight already had three years of experience with the X-15 and was considered up for the task. 
several design changes had to be made for the aircraft to prepare for the fateful mission. The X-15A2 selected for the mission would have to endure extreme temperatures associated with supersonic flight. In June 1967, it received a full-scale ablative coating for protection. It was a pink eraser-like substance that was then covered with a white sealant coat before the flight. Other special design changes for the X-15A2 included two external jettisonable fuel tanks, a longer main gear, a lengthened and lowered nose gear, a 29-inch extension of the fuselage, improved windshield design, a removable right-hand wingtip to accept test materials, a removable lower vehicle fin to permit the installation of powerful ramjet engines, and redesigns necessary to accommodate photographic experiments. However, even with all its customizations and the assurance of a highly competent pilot, the risks of the flight were immense. To prove the point, in June 1967, Net experienced engine failure while piloting the X-15 107,000 feet, or 32,600 meters above Earth. He barely survived by making an emergency landing in the middle of Nevada's Mud Lake. Incidents resulting in injuries were commonplace with tests involving the X-15. One of the most severe emergency landings occurred on November 9, 1962. Major Jack McKay experienced engine failure and was forced to make a high-speed landing on Mud Lake. McKay jumped from the X-15 moments before its violent landing. Though he smashed his back and head into the lake bed, he eventually recovered and would fly the X-15 22 more times after that. On October 3rd, 1967, Major Knight was able to get the rocket-powered X-15A2 up to a speed of 4,520 miles, or 7,275 kilometers per hour, which equates to Mach 6.7, over six times the speed of sound. Knight accelerated to the awe-inspiring speed while keeping full control of the aircraft, or so he thought at first. As the aircraft began to slow to a speed of Mach 5.5, engine cowling provoked a shockwave that affected the bottom of the plane melting the attachment pylon that kept the dummy scramjet attached to the aircraft. The vertical tail suffered from melting and skin rollback as well. A fuel temperature warning light turned on, and Knight had to dump the rest of the peroxide fuel on board to prevent it from combusting. Due to the rapidly deteriorating situation, he was unable to focus on slowing down the craft, arriving at Edwards Air Force Base at supersonic speed. Landing would be impossible under those conditions. He tried to fix the situation by ejecting the scramjet, but the maneuver had no immediate effect, and he had to fly past the landing site to let aerodynamic drag slow down the aircraft enough for him to land. The engine failure made it impossible for him to return to the base, forcing Knight to land the plane on Nevada's Mud Lake. The Jettison's scramjet was later recovered from the lake. It turned out it had not fallen off the aircraft immediately after the intended ejection, and more worryingly, it was determined that if it had stayed beneath the plane for slightly longer, it would have melted completely through the fuselage. Despite Major Knight's remarkable speed record in 1967, the high-risk incident and subsequent flights of the X-15 proved how unsafe it was. Just weeks after Knight's record-breaking flight, Tragedy hit the project with an X-15 plane piloted by Major Michael Adams. Since Knight had proven the speed capabilities of the jet, the mission for Adams was to test the X-15's altitude limits. On that day, Adams was able to climb to 50 miles above Earth, into the thermosphere, high enough for a satellite to enter orbit around the Earth. Reaching this threshold was so significant that the Air Force awarded astronaut wings to pilots that achieved such heights. However, as Adams tried to descend after being so high up, the electronics of the X-15's guidance and reaction controls malfunctioned, causing Adams to lose control of the plane. The aircraft spun at hypersonic speeds as it plunged to the ground below. By the end, Adams was suffering from vertigo and was nearly unconscious. He was unable to eject from the plane in time and perished when it crashed into the Mojave Desert. 
even after the tragedy with Adams, the X-15 was flown nine more times in 1968. Major Knight was even scheduled to take on its 200th flight in November 1968, but a series of technical problems thwarted the flight, and the X-15 was officially retired soon after. NASA pilot Bill Dana would be the last man to fly the X-15 in what was the 199th flight in the series. That final flight occurred on October 24, 1968, exactly a year and three weeks after Major Pete Knight had set the famous speed record. Other ex-vehicle experiments continued to be run by the Air Force, NASA, and the Navy until 1971, but due to the extreme dangers associated with the aircraft, no further tests were designed or run to break the speed record for piloted aircraft set by the X-15. The piloted speed record has stood uncontested for over 50 years. The drive to break speed records waned within NASA and the Air Force by the time the Apollo program proved successful in the late 1960s. It's logical to assume that the success of the Apollo program meant that U.S. agencies simply lost the need to test the upper boundaries and sheer limits of piloted flights. The paradigm also shifted away from flying faster and higher at any cost to give way for the safety, security, longevity, and durability of vehicles intended for space exploration. Simply put, incredible feats of speed were no longer a goal. This paradigm shift to a more cautionary, risk-averse approach is evident in NASA's current aircraft research programs. One example of this is NASA's fact sheet regarding its Prototype Technology Evaluation and Research Aircraft, or Terra, which explains how all prototype testing these days must be conducted in a laboratory. The Terra fact sheet states that, quote, the ability to alter Terra's configuration allows cost-effective testing of unconventional designs that might otherwise be too dangerous or expensive to test with a full-scale crewed aircraft. The approach today is clear. Testing of new innovations with human test pilots is simply too costly and risky. In fact, reaching the X-15 piloted speed record wouldn't be possible today, given the level of risk involved. Now the emphasis regarding speed lies on unmanned machinery such as military drones, currently being developed by the Air Forces of the United States, China, and Russia. Not to mention the development of hypersonic missiles that can travel at more than 3,000 miles per hour. Who needs human pilots when drones and missiles can do the work at those speeds without risking lives on the launching side? The need for speed in the air still excites some engineers, though. In 2005, the X-43A jet reached the phenomenal speed of 7,310 miles per hour, 2,791 miles faster than the 1967 record set by the X-15. Although the 2005 record was set for what is known as the airspeed record, that aircraft was unmanned. Major William Knight's achievement on that October day of 1967 thus remains the benchmark for the fastest any person has ever flown in a jet. And thanks to the very dangers of that record itself, no pilot or plane has since come close to breaking it. <laughs> 